guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 4, aka Armageddon Part 4. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was absolutely insane. I would argue this is probably the most insane start to a Flash episode, maybe ever. There is so much that goes on, and it begins right from the very beginning, so without further ado, let's go ahead and go through this all chronologically, so please stick around until the end of the video, because I'm sure you guys are going to want to hear about the ending. Okay, so it begins with Reverse Flash, and obviously this is a normal Reverse Flash, it's actually Barry who runs off to try and go into his normal costume, but he ends up coming back with his red lightning instead of his orangey yellow lightning and in a new reverse flash suit. Now, there is no explanation why he has this new reverse flash suit, why isn't it the original reverse flash suit? However, I think it's definitely because they just took the liberty of creating a new suit specifically for Barry and now in the future they can use it for Thorn because it's about time that maybe he got a new suit and this suit looks really, really good. And so it's at this point that it's revealed that Thorn has turned himself into the Flash. And he has his version of Team Flash who works for him. He has a few additions in the team. Alex Danvers is part of the team. Ryan Choi is a part of the team. And so this all goes down inside the place with Barry last episode where they ended it off. And so this is just a confrontation between Thorn and Barry. And you have the rest of Team Flash who fully suit up in an instant. It's really great, it's cool, obviously that's like a big plot error because, you know, how does Alex put on makeup that quick and how does everyone put on their costumes, I guess they could materialise it. But that would be extremely nitpicky and I'm not going to say that's an issue because I thought it was a cool moment to see them literally just like suit up in an instant. And so, at this point, they revealed that Barry's version of Reverse Flash in this timeline has killed a lot of people. And those people that are named is Ray, obviously Ray Palmer, Nate, Sarah Lance, and also, and the big one is, Cisco. So, Barry's Reverse Flash has killed Cisco in this timeline, that is the big reveal, which is completely shocking, I did not expect anything like this to go down. Obviously with this new timeline, Thorn has manipulated it in a way that he has created Barry as Reverse Flash as this really terrible enemy just like he was to Barry in the normal timeline. And so all hell breaks loose inside this place as Barry and Thorn go at it in their new costumes. And this leads on to Barry confronting Iris and Iris is like, you're a psychotic. Obviously because she believes he's a villain and that she doesn't know him and that she loves Thorn. So it's all very, very confusing and it's so weird to watch, but it's actually really good to watch at the same time. And now, this leads on to the big thing. All is revealed as Barry and Reverse Flash meet outside. Obviously, this is because Thorn takes Barry away and drags him out to this random, like, kind of dock place. I don't know where it exactly is. But he reveals that Iris is his lightning rod and that he reset the timeline by going back to 2013, just before Barry was in the coma to make sure that he got struck by lightning and became the Flash and Iris saw him and wrote about him as the Red Streak rather than as Barry as the Red Streak. So basically he reset everything and so Barry's like, so you created a new Flashpoint and he's like, no, I created a reverse Flashpoint. Again, this is just like a cool little reference and I love the new name, thought it was really nice. And we move on, so he reveals that Barry was too fast the last time they met, and so he realized he had to do something extremely significant. And obviously that's where he came up with the idea of changing everything sneakily and setting it in stone, while Barry is completely unaware of his deeds, because really Thorn could do anything and he can literally just go back in time and Barry would not be able to sense it. Obviously the speed force should be able to sense it, however he has tapped into his own speed force into the negative speed force, so there is actually no way of detecting it. Likewise with the negative still force. Again, that's not really kind of touched upon in this episode, but we go on and he reveals more. So he reveals that he got struck by the lightning and that he wore Barry's face during the last few episodes when Barry was lashing out 
against the citizens of Central City and attacking Team Flash. So Barry actually didn't black out. It was literally Thorn taking over his body somehow and wearing his face, which is just crazy. I don't know how exactly he does it, but that is a cool new addition to this episode. And so he also reveals that he made Barry lose his speed by forcing Barry to believe that he's gone crazy and that he's gone rogue and that he must be stopped. Obviously this is because Thorn has gone back in time and has taken over Barry and made him do these dark acts, basically forcing him to believe that he's crazy. And it's at this point that Barry's hand starts phasing out of existence and this happens multiple times throughout the episode and this is because Thorn's new timeline is setting in stone. And he revealed that he's killed Barry as a kid and that's the reason why he's erasing from the timeline and so Barry has a very limited time scope between him actually phasing completely out of existence and being able to save the world. But an even bigger thing is brought in, an even bigger hurdle is Armageddon. And we'll get on to Armageddon in just a minute. So this is where we see the reintroduction of Damien Dark. It's been a while since we've seen Damien Dark. Wasn't a big fan of him in Arrow, but I really liked him on Legends when Legends was actually good and the Legion of Doom was on in season two. And so it's been a while, but he's back and he was great in this episode. He's extremely grounded and he's a great type of villain in that he has a humanity to him and you can understand him, although sometimes you don't understand his dark deeds. It's just kind of how he is. But his main centerpiece, like what motivates him is his daughter. And I love that that was his motivation to actually team up and help Barry in this episode, who at first, when they first meet, literally at this moment, so it's a good segue, believes that Barry is Reverse Flash. And so Barry pretends to be the Reverse Flash as he talks in a similar way to him. And so he says, I want payback, and basically he's going to go after Thorn. And obviously Damien Dark is very impressed with this because he knows him to be an acquaintance, a dark acquaintance, and they do bad things together. And Thorn obviously has wronged him in some way, or so he believes it. And so that's why he's going after him. And Barry keeps on this charade for a long while. So they need a device called the PED. This is a device that Ray used. And obviously Ray Palmer was killed in this new timeline. And so it's the particle eradication device. I believe that is exactly what it was called. And so talking of the atom or, you know, in this case, not the actual atom, but the new version of the atom, we have Alex and Ryan Choi who are new members of Team Flash, as I mentioned. And so Alex has a couple of scenes, and this is mainly centered around Chester and Allegra, who have a budding romantic relationship. Apparently, 10 years ago in the past, in 2021, they had a night together, and so they had this connection. But Alex is kind of pursuing this because she's uncertain what happened, and, and it's later revealed that they still love each other in this version of the timeline. Obviously, we're going to go back to 2021 as we see at the end of the episode and there is no romantic relationship between Chester and Allegra but it's definitely teasing that this is coming. It's literally the year that they said that they do get together or so they were supposed to get together. So that's definitely going to happen at some point this season. And so moving on from this we have Damien Dark who realizes that Barry is not the person that he says he is as he stops dark from actually killing team flash and so it's at this point that barry reveals that he's in fact not the reverse flash but the flash he's a hero and that thorn is the real reverse flash and so he believes barry as he sees what's supposed to happen in barry's timeline with him sacrificing himself in order to save his daughter and so that's obviously nora dark and this is what motivates him to team up with barry and basically stick by his side. So then we go to Iris and normally Barry's loft and we have Batwoman who gives Iris a Velocity Zero gun which will sever Reverse Flash's connection to whatever speed force he is connected to. Obviously that speed force is a negative speed force and this Velocity Zero gun is a new thing. Maybe we'll see it again sometime in the future but I thought that would be an interesting thing just to bring up. And so Iris basically is trying to write her wedding vows with Eobar, but her mind keeps on going blank, and so 
she has this conversation with Ryan about, you know, her true feelings and, you know, all this hesitation and why she can't write it. Does it actually mean something greater is going on here than what she can actually see? And obviously there is. And Iris realizes this by the end of the episode. It's also revealed that Ryan is going to adopt a child with Sophie, obviously her girlfriend, which is a nice moment. There's also a moment where Alex refers to Kelly and the way and her happy life which is always nice to see and obviously Alex is a big advocate of happiness and finding love with the right person in this episode. As she is the one to kind of crack Ryan Choi out of his kind of bro shell I guess you would call it because he's basically stuck within his own mind and soon after he's able to voice his true opinions on love and obviously it leads to Allegra and Chester kissing before Armageddon begins. And so let's move on from here. There's actually a reference to the Legion of Doom and the fact that they were attacked in the past. Perhaps this means that the Legion of Doom is going to return at some point. Maybe we'll see Damien Dark come back and reverse Flash. This is definitely something that could happen in the near future. But I don't know if that was just like a sneaky reference to the past rather than teasing anything new. Okay, let's move on from here. So it's revealed that Barry will have to cause Armageddon in order to save the world by running around it so fast that chaos will reign and basically this apocalyptic event would completely destroy the entire world because of how fast he's going in and basically rips up everything and messes with the entire like gravity of the world I guess and lots of other things as well. Anyway so it's revealed that Barry being the paragon of love is extremely important because it guides both him and Damien Dark throughout this episode and you know, I love that they made this link. Obviously, this is a point that a lot of people are going to bring up because they don't like the fact that love is such an important thing in the show. But I do think the case of Barry's connection to Iris and Iris's connection to Barry being realized here in an alternate reality where Iris believes Barry to be a villain. So because of these circumstances, it makes it even more powerful, that connection, because they don't know each other. They are enemies, essentially, and now she takes a chance because she has a feeling. And so as Armageddon begins, Barry continues to phase out of existence. Barry runs around the whole world. You see volcanoes exploding, tsunamis happening, and basically everything going crazy around the world. And so he says bye to Damien Dark, who stands guard at the origin point of where Barry begins. And he's faced off against none other than Frost and Chillblain. And Damien Dark's magic doesn't work against them because Constantine provided them with a protection spell. So obviously there's just a reference to Constantine, someone that is a magic user and is heavily related to Damien Dark. So kind of like that reference. And so their fight was pretty good. But then the Atom shows up and Alex shows up and they knock Damien Dark out. And that pretty much does it for him in this episode. But the Flash continues to run and... Eobard Thorn chases behind him trying to stop Barry from changing the timeline by time traveling and running so fast that he goes back in time and literally destroys the world. So Despero at this point where we cut to him has killed Iris, Caitlin and everyone else on Team Flash in this timeline and Cecile is the only one left alive and it's pretty much teased that he was about to kill Cecile and that would be absolutely everyone gone. But that's at the point where the timeline changes and you can see it literally wipes over existence. And it's at this point that Barry returns to Star Labs which is fully fixed up and in proper operation. And Despero stands there and is like what have you done and so Barry reveals that he's reset the timeline and what actually happened with Thorn and why Armageddon actually isn't as it seems. Because he left 2031 before Barry actually reset things. And the fact that Thorn chased him and basically they created this speed wave that wiped over the entire Earth and they got so fast that they changed the entire timeline. And so it seems like everything is back to normal as Despero leaves and we see Team Flash inside Star Labs which is their own again and then the other thing that we get the reference to is Barry still in the CCPD but the big thing is Joe is alive and Barry briefly talks to him on the phone. And now, the final scene of the episode, the end credits scene, we have Reverse Flash, who returns to Star Labs in the Time Vault, in this new Reverse Flash suit. So it's the first time that we see Tom Kavanagh in the suit, and he looks great. 
and he says, I will live and you will help me. And by you, I'm nearly certain it is Gideon because he's in the time vault and Gideon still exists at this point in this new timeline. So he's going to mess with everything again and probably try and change the timeline again. Obviously the reason why he survived is he was running with Barry so obviously he went back in time as well. So it seems like he's in 2021 again and we're going to see him in part 5 of Armageddon. So wow, what an episode. What did you guys think of that? If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and tell me why you really liked it in the comments below. Also please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos. But for now, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.